That is the biggest fish I've ever shot in the UK. Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Daniel Mann. Now this channel was founded on traveling and spearfishing. Traveling this year has been exceptionally difficult, so consequently I've spent a lot more time diving where I live here in the UK. Now a lot of people will slag off the UK and say that it's crap diving, it's dirty, it's cold, there's no fish, but after spending probably more time diving here this year than I have cumulatively in the past four years of living here, I got to say, I really like diving here. Contrary to popular belief, I don't actually film and upload every single time I go spearfishing. Sure, I've got a GoPro and a camera with me most of the time, but sometimes I just feel like spearfishing and I don't feel like picking up the camera. That's the honest truth. There's been a lot of days this year where I've just filmed for a little bit and it's not enough to make an entire video, but some cool stuff still did actually happen. For instance, I shot the biggest bass I've ever shot in about five years this year. I also shot the biggest fish I've ever shot in the UK this year. Our story starts for our 2020 review, first day out of lockdown with Kevin Daly. Okay. How are you, Kevin? Are you excited about today? First time in a while? I am indeed. I am indeed. Um, <laughs> chance of a bass today? A good chance. Um, the plankton looks a bit heavier than I'd hoped, but uh, <laughs> we shall see. Time for a very, very long swim. After nearly an hour of swimming, I'm pretty broken. We've made it to our first spot. The plankton looks horrendous, but we didn't swim two kilometers for nothing. I genuinely could not see my ankles from the surface. Nonetheless, we were out there and we had to give it a go, but somehow, the brilliance of Kevin Daly, he manages to find a really solid fish. Nice bass, mate. Thanks. First one of the year. <laughs> yeah. Mate, he's a nice fish. He'd be three, three kilos, three and a half. Uh, not, yeah, not probably not quite. Maybe two and a half kilos. Beautiful fish. Uh, but yeah, I'm pleased with that. I would get a shot underwater, but you're not going to see much. <sighs> no, even if it's 12 degrees, windy, hardly any visibility, no fish. Oh, it's still me sitting at home in lockdown. A tip for any of you divers out there, if Kevin asks you to go for a shore dive, say no. <laughs> Ever since that dive, I became ever so slightly obsessed with trying to find a bass in a hole to shoot. Now, if you look on Kevin's channel, it's amazing. He has so many clips of shooting really big bass in holes with surgical precision, the way that he just seems to effortlessly just stick his gun in a hole and shoot a five or six kilo bass. It's incredible to watch. I'll link his channel in the description. You should really check it out. I really rate it. After that dive at the start of May, I had a few dives, more shore dives. I shot some small bass around one and a half kilograms. And then at the start of July, Kevin gives me a call and says, do you want to go look for some bass in holes? Yeah, I was in. It was a hot, sunny day. And I think everyone else had the same idea of going to the beach. I got stuck in a heap of traffic. It took me bloody ages to get down there. I told Kevin, you go out first, I'll swim out and meet you. I'm probably going to be about half an hour or 40 minutes late. By the time I found Kevin out there, he'd already shot a bass. Yeah, I've got one bass. It's not big. It's about uh, 48 to 50 centimetres, I reckon. That's all right, though. So, yeah, it's just comfortably, comfortably in there. Legal, so. Have you, um, you seen many more? No, no, it's the only one I've seen. Fast forward two hours, Kevin has his two bass and he says, I've got nothing more to do out here. I'm probably going to swim in. I said, look, can you give me 15 minutes? We'll swim in together. I just want to have a bit more of a look around. I've got a feeling that I'll find a bass soon enough. So I gave it one last dive, a nice, long, slow crawl along the bottom to a very nice looking cave. As I crept over to the cave, I could see the distinct white underbelly and chin of a pretty good sized bass. Still, to this day, watching that back really makes me angry. Angry at myself for 
losing that fish. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That fish was probably mortally wounded and ended up as crab food or seal food. What I think actually happened is the fish was sitting up against a rock. So when my spear went through it, it hit the rock on the other side. It didn't allow the spear to fully penetrate and my barb didn't toggle. That's why the spear came straight back out. Now, easy to say, we're in a pandemic. Why are you so worried about one fish? Well, fundamentally as a spear fisher, it really annoys me losing fish because I never want to just go out and injure fish. I want to select what I want to eat, target it and capture it effectively. And I failed on that. So it just got me really pissed off and added a lot of fuel to the fire on wanting to go shoot a bass in a hole and do the job properly. I told Kevin what happened. I said, you go in, I'm going to look around here until I find that bass. I stayed in the water for 45 minutes looking in every hole that I could and just didn't see the bass or any signs of it. So I swam in with the tail between my legs and decided I'd do better next time. I'm in a spearfishing club in London and there are a lot of guys with boats. I was lucky enough to get invited out on a pristine summer's day. As you can see, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day here on the south coast of England. I'm out with Jason and Izako and today we've tried to look at a few little wrecks but they've had scuba divers on them unfortunately so as soon as you see scuba divers or somebody else on a spot when you get there time to leave so now we're going to head offshore to try and look at some reefy areas some rocky caves and hopefully find ourselves some sea bass On this dive, I saw a really nice undercut on this piece of rock. So I decided to crawl along the bottom and see if there were any fish hanging in and around it. As I got closer, I saw a skate sitting under the rock. I decided to take my GoPro off my head to see if I could film it a little bit closer because generally they're quite docile. But as I was taking off the GoPro, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. Although this bass was a little bit on the smaller side, it was still 45 centimeters, which is well above the 42 centimeter minimum legal size in the UK. And it made a fantastic meal for two people. Later on in the day, I was looking in the same sort of holes that I was trying to find bass in earlier in the month. And as I came down on the top of one, why, why? I guess I just approached that hole from the wrong angle and the fish could see me through the top crack in that cave. The saga for the bass in a hole continues. In the United Kingdom, there is a fish called a balanrass. Now these are also found in parts of Europe as well and in the Mediterranean, but this particular dive, I was blown away by the sheer volume of these fish I was seeing. I'm sure they were doing some sort of spawning aggregation, getting jiggy with it because there were hundreds of these things and some of the fish had marks on their forehead, I presume from fighting over mates. It was something pretty cool to see. Rats weren't the only thing I saw in this dive. I headed up into the shallows and found my favorite fish for Baja style fish tacos. Sorry, if you're English and watching this, I mean fish tacos. Over the years, I have come to love the humble sea mullet, and if you get them away from harbors and estuaries, they actually taste really good. Usually you'll find mullet out in the open, but occasionally you'll get them inside of holes like sea bass. This day, I was out on another club member's boat, Jethro, and we were diving for sea bass. And I came across this cave that I thought was just, it had to hold fish.
wasn't exactly the sea bass I was after, but it gave me a lot of confidence that my hole hunting technique was improving mildly enough that I could actually sneak up on a mullet and manage to stone it out of a hole. So I thought for the rest of the day, yeah, I'm gonna find a bass. This is my day. Let's go find some holes. The skipper continued to put us onto some great country. These caves here were insane. You could swim through them. They had multiple entrances. They just screamed sea bass, but we didn't see any. Small sea bass was to be the order of the day. Later that afternoon, we found a shoal of them, but none of them were bigger than around one and a half kilograms. So I decided to put the gun down and pick up a camera. I often get asked, are there any sharks in the United Kingdom? And yes, there is. There's poor beagle sharks, mako sharks, and blue sharks. They're the main ones that you're probably going to encounter if you're burlying up or fishing specifically for them. But I've never encountered any of these myself. The closest thing I've ever encountered to a shark in the UK happened this year. It's called a smooth hound, basically a gummy shark. The smooth hound was about four or five feet long and it actually came straight at me. I quickly put my GoPro on and just caught the last part of it turning. It was pretty chilled for a little bit and then I started following it and it decided it didn't like me, put on the afterburners and it was out of there. As summer rolled on, thankfully my work was picking up and I was back to five days a week and sometimes doing Saturdays. So I had a few days in lieu. I decided to save some of these for an autumn jaunt down to South Devon with Joe PK. Beautiful crisp morning, heading out, hopefully gonna find some bass today. If we don't find any bass, we'll look for some pollock. But just more stoked just to be out here on a beautiful calm day, on a boat, not at work. When you get to the back end of autumn and leading into winter in the UK, you tend to get prevailing stormy weather on the south coast and it can make it very difficult to actually find a weather window to get out and go spearfishing. This was the day that we got out and I was so relieved to find that we had good visibility. First dive of the day, plump little black bream. Thank you very much. I didn't actually shoot, shoot it there. I shot it there, but it, it tore down. So my shot wasn't terrible. I jumped back in and a short while later, Hayden called me over and said that he'd just seen a shoal of bass. I should have a dive in this area. With the ever-changing national restrictions that were going on at the time, I thought to myself, yeah, this might be the last dive I get for the year. So I was looking for a standout fish to get some decent fillets off, put them in the freezer for the winter. Yeah, buddy. Really nice fish really happy with that. I need to get myself in the water. He does indeed. Look uh, at this. Yeah. What depth for you? 11 meters, not, not particularly meters. deep. It wasn't a real long dive, it was like less than a minute. Uh -huh. um, and they came in? Yeah, so I, I, Hayden said he just saw some and then I moved into where he saw them and then as I got down, I saw two bugger off and then there was one at the front of the school that was blind and it was at the head of the school. So it must have been, you know, more curious than the other ones. And then, uh, yeah, I saw this shoal come through. I was just waiting for a, a slightly larger one. This one looked significantly bigger than the others and nice, fairly nice shot. So 
What a better way to end the bass season. Hell yeah, buddy. Let's get you in there, Water Joe. Yes, I would very much like to dive and shoot a bass. After I shot that 4.2 kilogram sea bass, I decided to put the gun away for a bit, grab the camera and follow Joe. Unfortunately for Joe, the sea bass had disappeared, so we decided to look on some drop off to see if we could find some big pollock. Joe swam over to the edge, took a dive, and I waited on the surface. Joe didn't disappoint and returned to the surface with a beautiful nine and a half pound pollock. That's 4.3 kilos in real money. Back on the boat, Joe told me that he had seen two standout pollock amongst a few smaller ones down there. I said, do you think I should go have a look? He said, I think you should go have a look. So I went and had a look. I was so thankful for a good shot on this pollock because when they're big like this, they can tangle you really badly on the bottom. This pollock came in at 12 and a half pounds, which is about 5.7 kilograms, and it's actually the biggest fish I've ever shot in the UK. It had beautiful thick white fillets off it that are packed down in my freezer, ready to eat for the rest of this winter. Possibly it's bait. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love Devon. After seeing the size of this fish, I kind of realized that some of the other pollock that I'd been seeing throughout the day were probably much bigger than I originally anticipated. My suspicions were confirmed, this fish here was still three kilograms. D-Man managed a cracking bass on, on one of his early dives. Um, and then they thinned out a bit, but I found a nice, uh, nice pollock in 20 meters. Show us your pollock, mate. Whip it up real quick. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and we get a photo. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Yeah. That's it's... definitely my pollock, mate. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's not yours. What, well, I thought that was mine. Uh, have a look at the eye, mate. Did you shoot yours in the eye? Oh, <laughs> Joe PK. Cheeky, cheeky git. Genuine mistake, viewers. Genuine mistake. Picked up another man's fish. <laughs> well, you know what they say about size? D-man's is bigger. <laughs> As I thought, that was indeed the last dive I had for the year, but what a great way to end for me with a personal best pollock and the biggest sea bass I've shot in many years. It's great to have a lot of fillets tucked away in the freezer for the coming months ahead in winter. This is going to be the last video for the year and I just want to end on a very sincere thank you. Thank you so much to everybody that has supported the channel this year through buying some merch off the website, liking the videos, subscribing, commenting, or sending me a message to say, thanks for entertaining me during lockdown. It's been a real honor for me to be able to do that this year. So thanks for allowing me to do it. I also want to say Merry Christmas to everyone out there, whatever that looks like for you, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you in 2021.